you improve in the red zone offense? Um, just got to um, execute, honestly. Just got to execute, no errors. Honestly, that's the biggest thing, execute and not shoot ourselves in the foot. That's the biggest thing. Does your job as a, as a tackle change any once you get inside the 20? Is what you have to do any different or is it just the same stuff? You just got to be more consistent. It's just as an offensive lineman, period, when you get to the red zone, we got to really lock in. Like We got to lock in and know everything is fourth and one mentality. We got to get it, basically. We got to score. We got to score points. Can, can you guys kind of say, well, we're moving the ball pretty pretty well and, and eventually kind of that, that red zone success will come if you keep it up? Um. Yes, sir, but we got to execute and not shoot ourselves in the foots. And um, me, personally, myself, I had a uh, few miscues and stuff like that, and you can't do that. So you got to execute because some, certain things like that could be the cause of you losing and winning the game. That first drive, you guys you know, ran the ball well. I know you guys were kind of pretty balanced. But uh, what, what was it after that when you went back and watched the film? Was it just just execution? Was it, is it simple as that? Yeah, it was execution, really. Honestly, that's really what it was, execution. If it wasn't like it was uh, like a missed assignment here or there, that's what it was. Is it, is it a confidence thing, though, too, once you're, like, once you're rolling? Because, I mean, the first couple of games, when you guys are rolling, it just seems like you can see the energy, Jake and the rest of you guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you guys kind of stall out a little bit, um, where's the confidence level go? We try to keep everything level. We try to keep everything level-headed on the sideline. We don't try to let anything get us too happy or anything get us too low, really. So we, so we can just keep going no matter what. No matter if we're down 14 at half, we can come back out and play the same way and be up at the end of the game. How much has been back, left, right tackle, both? How does that affect you, and how have you handled that? Um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect. It shouldn't affect anyone, honestly. But... Um, I haven't handled it as well as I would like to, to be truthful, because I wish I would have played better. But it's going to come. What, what is that like, switching your stance kind of mid-season like that? It's not that big of a deal, honestly. It's just the difference in putting your right hand down and putting your left hand down and flipping the play. Going back to the uh, subject of confidence, and this is in um, reference to the whole team, but winning the game in the manner that you did on Saturday, Coming from behind, last second win. Can that confidence and momentum um, continue on Saturday against Texas A&M? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it could, it could, but we try to um, every 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 week is a new week. We try to, we know this week something big for us. You know, it's SEC West matchup. It's a big, it's a big time thing for us. So, period. Whether it was whether we was rolling off momentum or not, we was gonna treat this week very, very special. Like how do you guys communicate on the offensive line when you guys are in a hostile environment like a and Um Honestly, we just have to communicate. We just communicate. We communicate every game, but like in a game like that, we got to communicate. Like we got to make sure we communicate every play. Make sure we're all on the same page, so nothing, nothing bad happens, miss assignments or anything like that. Is it a lot of like nonverbal stuff? Um, certain stuff, certain stuff, verbal, certain stuff, certain things are nonverbal. What is that like being on an offensive line that's moving all kind of the pieces that you guys have sort of had to really for the last two years? Um, it's just something we're doing to find the best best jail, honestly. Mm -hmm. Everybody, it's like a next man up um, mentality. Everybody got to be ready. No matter what, you got to be ready when your number call. Is that tough to kind of find that gel with guys sort of in and out? Uh, not really because we, we, as an offensive line, we all like each other. So, jailing on the field isn't too hard. With the injuries that have happened, do you feel yourself as a unit coming together more and putting more focus on, you know, staying together? Yes, sir. I, yes, sir. I, I can say, you, yes, you say that. We can. We, um, as injuries happen, we have to come together because when the next man up, we need him. We need him. We need them to be good and play better. So, we just all working with each other, trying to make each other better. What has it been like watching Sidarius transition from tackle to guard? Obviously, a guy that you were competing with for a while uh, in the off season. Uh, I like. I mean, he's doing a real good job, honestly. You know, I respect it a lot. He, he's coming along. He's strong. He came in the game. Didn't know. What, didn't know he was about to get in the game. And I believe he played pretty good. Honestly, I'm real proud of him. He did a real good job to me. Did, how does his skill set sort of fit at that guard position? 
you strong. Like he's really strong. Like he's extremely strong and he's athletic. I just feel like if he get everything handled, it, he could really be a, a force. When he's in those kind of, when Lyman is in those kind of tight quarters, does that does that strength kind of take a little bit more um, importance? Yes, sir. You have to be strong. You have to be a person like Sedaris to play a guard, play guard or center or something like that. Because as I code call it, it's the briar patch. You can't be soft. You gotta be strong. You gotta be tough. And that's exactly what Sedaris is.